the study was that we worked on is uh, housing and transportation costs for the DC region. And we worked for about two years with uh, the Center for Neighborhood Technology based in Chicago. And they're basically the experts in this field. They've been doing it for many years. And um, we first heard about their study when they'd done, done uh, an analysis of their first 28 uh, metro areas in the country. Uh, and what the study does is it, it looks at the combined cost of, of housing and transportation. And I'll go into in a little bit into why. Um, and we immediately saw that this study had value, and there were a couple of things that uh, we were really interested in, in going into with the Center for Neighborhood Technology. And, but essentially, they've now done, I think, over 300 of the metro areas in the country. Um, and, but, there's, but one of the things is right now, at least, they're still using the 2000 census data. And uh, that was one of the things that we wanted them to do when we first heard about their study was we wanted to update uh, the numbers. Uh, as everyone here is probably aware that um, in the past 10 years, um, the Washington region has, and across the country really, um, two things were, had dramatic changes. One, the cost of housing. And of course now we've seen uh, um, a drop in many markets uh, across the country in the cost of housing. Uh, but secondly, also, um, a, a highly fluctuating uh, real price of gas. Um, and so we wanted to first update, uh, have them update their, their study uh, for uh, the DC region. That was the first uh, task that we asked them. Um, but essentially, what the study does is, as I said, it looks at the combined cost of housing and transportation. And in particular, it looks at uh, neighborhood characteristics. So if you see on the slide, um, you know, you might be living in suburban tract housing, um, and but you're commuting to work uh, or to shopping uh, via, you know, highways. Uh, or you might be living in a dense urban setting and you have the opportunity to do more walking uh, to your job or, and also to retail and, and other services. Um, so Again, it looks at the combined costs, and it, the idea was to expand the definition of affordability. Um, traditionally, for the past 30 years, the definition of affordability was roughly about 30% of income going toward housing costs. However, the Center for Neighborhood Technology knew that uh, transportation costs are the, the next largest uh, line item on a household budget. And so they started doing work on, OK, well, how does that vary? Uh, how does it vary by the neighborhood characteristics? How does it vary by household characteristics? And what they found uh, across their national studies was that transportation costs uh, averaged for the nation about 18% of a household's budget. And so what they said, well, let's state as an aspirational goal that we would like to keep transportation costs uh, below 15% of the budget of the household's budget. And if we combine the two, uh, the housing and transportation, we'd like to keep them under 45%. So again, that was sort of an aspirational goal. Um, and, uh, and what I'll do now is go into a little bit more detail into how they created the study. They, they break it down into essentially six neighborhood uh, characteristics and, and three household variables. And you can see them on the slide. Um, and essentially what those um, using census data and uh, um, vehicle data from Department of Motor Vehicles and a, a whole bunch of other sources, they combine those nine um, data points into uh, rates of car ownership, into uh, how many miles per year you might have to drive your car, uh, and then what's the percent of public transit that you use on a, on a daily basis. And those three costs uh, go into just a fairly simple uh, formula to estimate what the total transportation costs are for that household. So this was their base um, uh, study. And again, it was primarily using 2000 census data. So as I mentioned, the first thing we wanted them to do was update the numbers. Um, and we settled on um, using, for instance, the American Community Survey data from 2006 to 2008. Uh, for uh, cost of housing, we wanted them to not use the census data because that uses data from people who bought mortgages, bought houses and with mortgages you know, many years earlier. So they're, it's not truly reflective of the current cost of housing. So we asked them to use um, um, the um, MLS data on the sales of houses, and that was used to trend up the, the neighborhoods uh, for the housing costs. And then the last thing is we wanted them to focus really on 
um, the neighborhood characteristics and how those affect transportation costs. Um, households, obviously, you know, the higher the income the household, the more likely um, uh, they are to own cars, the more likely they are to drive more. Uh, the household size, you know, if you have uh, kids that you have to take to activities or, you know, shopping more frequently because you're buying more groceries, uh, and also obviously the number of commuters in your household. So we asked them to keep that, that uh, constant. And the, the last uh, thing we asked them to do is we had some ideas about what, what were some of the other things that kept um, transportation costs. And those two things were uh, the diversity of land uses that a household has immediate uh, um, access to. So within a walking distance or you know, say a 10, 15 minute walk distance, uh, what kind of land uses can you get to? Can you get to shopping? Can you get to jobs? Um, can you get to public services? Can you get to parks? Um, and so that was one thing we wanted them to add in. And then secondly, we wanted them to refine their transit measure. Uh, and that was essentially their, their, their transit connectivity index was, was basically the number of routes, uh, metro stations uh, that you had access, immediate access to. Uh, we wanted to refine that a little bit more and say, well, where does that get you? And essentially, it's very similar to the immediate access to land use. We asked them to, to look at the diversity of land uses that you would have access to in a 30-minute travel time along transit. And so that was uh, another variable that we asked them to include. And then, as I said, uh, we asked them to hold the household variables constant so we could zero in on just the neighborhood characteristics and how they affected transportation costs. Um, and we worked with them to acquire, uh, and lastly, we worked with them to acquire some better data. We got them to help get them the land use data and also improve um, some of their uh, bus route data and, uh, and other um, public transit data. So this is the uh, first sort of summary slide, and this is just the housing costs uh, for the region. And I don't think this slide has any surprises for anybody here. Um, essentially, uh, from northwest DEC and going further north and west of the city, uh, housing costs generally go up. Um, the, so the most expensive areas of the region are in here, but you also see expensive housing out here and in, and in other areas. Um, and then generally as you go farther out, away from the core of the region, in all the directions, housing becomes less expensive. And that's essentially the drive to you qualify. People are, are uh, going out to farther out in the region so they can afford the monthly payment on a house uh, in a given neighborhood. So this is the first sort of summary slide. And at this scale, it's kind of hard to, to, to see the, the detail. And I have some other slides that will go into better detail for this. But generally, you see that the transportation costs uh, are lower at the core of the region and more expensive um, uh, farther out. Um, you know, beyond the Beltway and into the other uh, counties around the region. And, and again, it's, it's the access to transit, uh, it's the access to jobs, um, and it's the walkability of your neighborhood. And one of the interesting things is it's really strongly correlated with just the overall residential density of the neighborhood. Uh, and if you think about residential density, that's sort of a proxy for a couple of things. One, it's sort of a build it and they will come. If you have a lot of uh, people living in a given area, services, retail and public services, are going to want to try to locate close to them. Um, so you have uh, closer access to retail in particular. Uh, but it's also a proxy for how much extra transport or owning a car just might be because you have parking costs. In the denser part of, of uh, DC, uh, you might be spending anywhere from $150 to $300 a month uh, paying for a rental space on a car, uh, or maybe forty or fifty thousand dollars for a space to purchase, and so that's that's not taken into the model. But I think it's it's uh, it's important that everyone should be aware that that's one of the costs um, that residential density probably correlates with. So when we now combine the two, we start seeing how. Um, the combined cost of housing and transportation adds up to a percent of household budgets. And actually, let me go back uh, to the previous slide. If you'll note the range uh, on the chart here of the transportation costs, essentially on an annual basis, the lowest uh, or the least expensive neighborhoods uh, ranged about $8,500 a year for, an for the average household in that area, uh, oh, actually average household for the region. Uh, but as you go farther out, 
to those more suburban jurisdictions, exurban jurisdictions, the transportation costs could, uh, they estimated to be up, upwards of $25,000. Um, and so you can see that the range of, of, um, of transportation costs and how they vary uh, across the region. In the district, it's the overall for the district, it's about $11,000 a year. And for the average for the region, it's about $16,000 a year in transportation costs. And that gives you some idea um, of what people are spending. And just sort of anecdotally, I, I, you know, I asked some of my colleagues at the Office of Planning, um, well, does this sort of ring true for you? And uh, one, one of my colleagues I talked to said, well, I live right, right beyond the Beltway, and, but I'm a slug. My, my household has one car, and I share a ride into, into work every day. But my neighbor has three cars. <laughs> and that, that's the kind of average that we're, that we're collecting when we look at this data. We're, we're looking at some households may have three cars for their transportation needs, and other uh, households may only have one car or no cars at all. So again, when we combine the two, um, and it's, again, it's kind of hard to tell from the previous maps, uh, but we do see a shift in, in what we do are now defining as affordable when we're trying to keep um, household transportation costs below 45%. And so this, is, this slide makes a little bit uh, more clear uh, to understand. On the left, uh, you see the areas in yellow where uh, housing costs are below that 30% benchmark. Um, so again, it's primarily areas on the outer edges of the, of the region and, and to the southeast of, of the district, um, the southeast uh, part, portion of the district and into Prince George's County. However, you see uh, now on the right slide, you see when we combine the housing and transportation costs, the reduction in the areas that are affordable. We now have more areas in blue where the combined cost is, is over 45%. And so you start to see what the impact is when you look at, at both housing and transportation on your typical household across the region. Excuse me, Art, I have a quick question about sure. how you uh, calculated your housing costs. Did you include PITI? Or, and how did you distinguish rental from um, ownership? So rental and ownership were included, and, and uh, it included uh, principal interest for, for ownership. It included principal in interest taxes and insurance, yes. Yeah, and that's all data that they get from the ACS. So basically, it's using the, the census's um, uh, combined cost of housing data that you can get. Um, so the next summary slide breaks it down I into more detail. Um, on the left, in the sort of dark red, you see the areas of the region where the housing costs are inexpensive, they're below 30%, but when you add in the transportation costs, uh, you're now over 45%. And again, it tends to be the outer areas of, of the region. Uh, and you start to think about it, okay, how many people are actually living in those areas of the region? Uh, on the right hand, uh, slide, you see the sort of uh, inverse of that. You see areas of the region where the housing costs are above 30% for the typical household, but the transportation costs are low enough um, to keep the combined cost below 45%. And I think there's two things that we can take from this slide. One, right now, um, you know, the areas that have low transportation costs are pretty limited, right? We have good transit. Uh, but they can only, and, and good access to jobs, but they can only go so far when you're addressing um, expensive housing. On the other side, though, you, again, you start to see all those people who are, thought they were moving to an area that was affordable for them, but they weren't necessarily taking into account the transportation costs, and, and it's actually, uh, if they were to live in some of these areas of, of, uh, of D.C. and Arlington County and then some out in, in Falls Church, um, they would actually have lower combined costs for housing and transportation. And so now I'll start going into, okay, well, so what? Well, what do we use this for? And uh, so I'll start talking about some of the applications in the region, in the district, and then uh, across the country as well. Um, I think the first thing that I would like to say about this is it really goes, this study goes toward the sort of economic resiliency of, of the region. If you think about a household that drives, uh, has a, let's just take one car. Let's say they drive one car, but they drive it uh, 15,000 miles a year, which is definitely, you know, there are a lot of households out there that drive that. Um, and 
the price of gas doubles, which it uh, did essentially between, say, 2007 and 2009, or 2008 into 2010, if the, the uh, price of gas doubles in a, in a very short period of time, that's essentially one mortgage payment that is now taken out of their pocket. You know, that they have to get to their job, they have to do their grocery shopping, but all of a sudden, say, $1,500 a year has now gone toward their transportation costs. Um, and, but areas that are uh, less reliant on automobile to get around, um, those households in those areas, their transportation costs are going to be much more stable year in and year out. So, um, as part of the Region Forward initiative, um, the, which is a sort of a vision plan for the Washington metropolitan region, uh, one of the sort of metrics or targets that we identified um, was that in our essentially in our job centers, we wanted to keep the combined uh, cost of housing and transportation below that 45% um, target. Uh, and this slide shows you essentially, uh, and I should say the, the average for the region is 44%. So across the region, we're, we're meeting that goal. However, when you look at the individual job centers, um, you know, there are many, uh, essentially about 50% probably, uh, that exceed that goal. And you can see that they, they um, sometimes it's the housing cost clearly, for instance, uh, in the district uh, Georgetown and, and Wisconsin Avenue, um, you know, those are obviously areas of the city where we have very high housing costs, uh, but the transportation costs are low, but it does bump it over the 45%. Um, whereas in farther out, uh, we could probably assume that yes, their housing costs are lower than 30%, but their transportation costs are high enough to bump it over 45. And again, so this is one of the things that the region will be looking at, um, you know, and keeping track of uh, probably over the next 20 years. Um, so, so there are some other areas, uh, some other jurisdictions that and uh, and stakeholders that are using the data. Arlington County is uh, uh, using it to just be a description of their neighborhoods, uh, but they're also going to be looking at the potential impacts along their Columbia Pike streetcar uh, corridor. Uh, WMATA is using the data um, to to uh, document the impact and the value of transit to keeping household transportation costs low. And then one of the other things that uh, I've recently reached out to the Urban Institute, um, it, uh, because they've been doing a lot of uh, analysis on the foreclosure issues in the region, is seeing if there is a connection between um, foreclosures and transportation costs for those areas. Um, there's been uh, previous work done by the CEOs for cities called Driven to the Brink, which suggests that there is a connection, that in areas where transportation costs are high, uh, the foreclosure rates uh, are, are also higher than, than the average. And then finally, across the country, and this list, you know, this list is not meant to be read, it's really just to demonstrate how many other jurisdictions are using this. And it, it's pretty funny when I, uh, one of the first times I gave this presentation, literally the day before uh, I gave the presentation, uh, the APA put out in their planning advisory service this list of, of jurisdictions that are using it. So I said, well, okay, I gotta use this in my presentation because clearly there's a lot of places across the country that are using this. Um, to analyze and, and uh, to analyze their their neighborhoods and and affect their policies. So now I'll go into a little bit more detail into what the district is using it for. Um, one of uh, the things that the Office of Planning is working on is a land use study around the proposed streetcar corridors in the district. Um, the district knows that you know without significant investment in in the metro system. Uh, Metro is going to be reaching capacity in say 10 or 15 years, and so we're now planning uh, for streetcars, uh, and we want to know well, okay, what's going to be the impact on those streetcar corridors in the district? And and uh, one of the things that we can do is we can use this data to analyze those proposed proposed streetcar corridors. And with that, I'll go into one of the things that the Center for Neighborhood Technology developed for us. It's a web-based tool where we can input neighborhood change, say over a 10-year period, and, and estimate how uh, that will affect the transportation costs of, of a given neighborhood. Um, so as an example uh, the, uh, of the tool, what I've done is I've selected some uh, areas of the district 
uh, around the historic St. Elizabeth's campus, where we know the Department of Homeland Security is going to be locating roughly 14,000 jobs, and we expect uh, the private sector to add in maybe another three or 4,000 jobs uh, uh, above and beyond that. We also have several large projects the district is working on, including Poplar Point, uh, Berry Farms, uh, and, the, and the East Campus of, of St. Elizabeth's, uh, where we'll expect new households. And then finally, uh, it's the um, MLK uh, is also, Martin Luther King Avenue is also proposed to have a streetcar. So what the tool that CNT created for us will do uh, is estimate when we put input all those changes, what will be the output of the model. So it suggests that uh, autos per households will drop for the typical household about 61%. Uh, vehicle miles traveled per year will drop about 42 percent. Transit usage will increase by 36 percent. And then finally, that uh, results in an estimated decrease in transportation costs of 50 percent. Okay, well, so what's the next step of that? We know in many of the areas of the district where we have low transportation costs, we also have very high housing costs. Um, and so, and this is one area with all those jobs moving in, uh, and all the housing, all the opportunities for housing, we might ex expect uh, a, a fairly dramatic shift in the cost of housing in those neighborhoods. And that has issues for uh, lower income households who need affordable housing. Um, it has issues for the district's tax base. Uh, it has a variety of things that we can then sort of start to estimate using the model. And uh, with that, I, I'd like to open up for questions.